Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. This is an unplanned impromptu video. I have my inspiration piece, something that my daughter made, and I have a vague idea in my mind how this is gonna go. But at this point, I'm just gonna create and just go with the flow. So Easter's coming up and I reckon I'm going to do a tutorial on these Easter egg dyed papers. They don't have to be scrunched up. You can see mine are quite scrunched up and that's the particular look that I was going for. Look at these beautiful colors. This type of paper needs a specific type of project and I have a project in mind for this thing. I made these two Easter's ago, so I've been hoarding the paper. So perhaps I can maybe do something with these papers, not the project that I have in mind, but I thought maybe I can do something with this and something with this today. So I'm gonna start off perhaps with this paper. Please do let me know if this is a tutorial you would like to see. And when do you want to see it? Do you want to see it before Easter or do you want to see it after Easter when you have all this leftover Easter egg dye? It doesn't matter, I suppose. Okay, so I've chosen some paper. And now, because this here is my inspiration, I'm going to chop it in half. Okay, that's done. And I'm going to pop them on top of each other. I could make two notepads, but... I reckon I'm just going to go with one, make it worthwhile. Now I feel like I want some type of a base at the back. Miraculously, I found something that's perfect size. And sometimes the heavens smile down upon you. Is that a thing people say? This is from some, some type of a notepad or, or paper pad. And it is the perfect size because obviously it was an A4 piece that I cut down or maybe an A5. And here we go, a perfect size. And I'm just gonna leave it plain. I could go and cover it, but I'm just gonna, cause I wanna make some more. The ideas might evolve as we do this video. So I don't wanna waste time on like printing the back up because the back isn't gonna be visible. Okay, at this stage, I am thinking that I want this to be a notepad that kind of hangs perhaps in the fridge. I want these to be tear away pages so that, oh, look at this, this side. So that each page has its kind of uh, time in the sun. <laughs> uh, so these will be tear away pages. So how do I make them tear away pages? Usually you would, there's a technique where you would, uh, you know, have them really really together and then apply glue up here let it dry and that compress it you know that kind of thing i'm not going to do that because i also want to have something happening at the top so what i'm going to do i'm going to sew right through the pages up here at the top i'm going to make the stitches quite close together so that we can tear the tear away notepad so that we can tear the pages away easily all right let's see how that works okay so i'm only sewing the pages together and not the back cover because I have something else in mind. I have 16 pages in here, which was just completely random number. Okay, here we go, done. So that's on through and the stitches very close together. Look at this, very, very close together because I want this to be a tear away, like I said, and I want it to be easy, so easy like this, okay? Uh, and I don't want to tear this away now. I don't want to test it to show you because I just don't want to. And look at this paper. Look at this green one. How cool. Okay, now the next thing I want to do. Oh, I have, I, have, I have things in my mind. Obviously, we want to attach the backboard. And also, I want to get rid of the threads. At this point... What I'm going to do is attach this to this, just using double-sided tape. I could have sewn right through onto this, but for some reason, I didn't want to. Well, I'll tell you the reason. The reason why I didn't want to is because my stitches had to be really close together, as I've already explained, and it's already quite thick, you know, and if I had added this, it might make my job that much more difficult. So I'm simply just going to use this, now, if I wasn't planning on doing the next step, which you will see in a moment, I wouldn't trust the double-sided tape to do its job, um, you know, 100%. So I would, at this point, also apply glue, which I'm not going to do now because I have something else in mind. So double-sided tape is the only thing that's going to hold it down for now, but I have to make sure that I align it per perfectly without, you know, 
messing it up. All right, that's perfect. So at this stage, what's happening is only the back page really is glued down and all of these pages are free, which not bad. I mean, it's not, a, it's not an issue. All right, now that that's done, because this here is my inspiration, I'm going to create the two holes. She's got three holes here, so maybe we could even do something with that. Basically, I'm creating a handle that you can use to hang it onto something. We're creating a handle. So I'm just going to mark where I want the holes to be and I'm gonna go in inch from the side. And now I'm going to make the holes. I have a cropper dial and I'm gonna use this. If I didn't have a cropper dial, I would use this, but I might, uh, I might do the papers first and then the backboard and then glue them together. But for now, this is what I'm using. All right, so holes are done. This is absolutely sufficient. You don't need eyelets, but I'm going to use eyelets because I have them. So why not? Hopefully they're long enough for my stacks of paper. They might not be actually, so this plan might not work because this is supposed to be the extra reinforcement and they're not long enough. I'll just have to make it work somehow. Not only are they not long enough, but they're also not wide enough. Well, the holes are not wide enough, so they're too wide, the eyelets, but we can make it all work. And I don't, I don't really think that it matters if the eyelets are not long enough. They are just going to have to comply. Okay, the eyelets are in and they don't actually go all the way out. So we'll see if this is going to work. But because I will have a string there, I don't really think it's going to matter anyway. So I shall proceed. It's actually looking pretty good. The eyelets are doing their job, which is uh, holding everything together. And actually, when it was all pressed down, the eyelet actually did come out a little bit. So perfect job done. Look at this, our notepad. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is this is the part I've been looking forward to the most. I'm going to make a handle and you can go about this a million ways, obviously. And with a million possibilities comes a million decisions you have to make and that can make the creative process slow down a bit. So I'm going to try and just, you know, not overthink it here. Since I have this little prototype here, I wouldn't mind beading here and beading at the back, perhaps a smaller handle like this, so that the handle is at the back of the book rather than at the front, which is how I was planning to do it like this. Well, I think either way it, it's going to work. So here we go. I'm just using some twine. But of course, if I want to have beads here, I have to do the beading at this stage. So I'll just go ahead and do it. So what looks better, gold or silver? I think silver looks better. So let's just add a few beads. Okay, front is done. And I can have it loose like this, or I can have it tight like this. It doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do exactly the same thing here at the back. I could use different beads or whatever, but I'm just going to keep it simple and just repeat the same. All right, so here we go. All the beads are on. I just have to tie it. So I put all of the beads onto this one string here. And so now I can go to the back and tie a knot. Okay, so I've made it really tight at the back and this is what it looks like at the front. Oh, quite fancy. Let's go grocery shopping. This is kind of how it looks like when it's hanging on something, just so you can see a bit of a visual. Hello. Banjo love, come say hello. What do you think of my project? Come. Come say hello. Say hello. Hello. Hello, beautiful boy. Look over there. Look over there. Okay, you may resume the very important job of sleepage. I love how it turned out. And I was worried that when it hangs, it might tip forward or backwards, depending on where I put the string at the back or at the front. But it doesn't. It hangs straight. And now because the pages are different, it's quite fun because each time one is, you know, ripped off, you get a different kind of a look. It's pretty cool. I love that. Even in a journal, it looks quite nice. And I'm going to make another one. I'm going to follow this idea and just make a small little adjustment 
to make it rather than something that you hang on your fridge or wherever i want it to be in a journal i'm going to follow the exact same steps for my next one and i'll do it off camera and i'll be back before the beading part so i can tell you what i'm going to change okay this is what i have so far exactly the same steps but i'm not adding the thick backboard i don't think i need it and now i'm going to do the beads but i'm going to do a long you know handle all right so that's the front done and now i'm going to start beading the back same as before all right here's my long handle and i'm going to show you what i'm going to do next but first i need to make sure that these knots here are secure all right here's what i'm thinking next we're going to put a little charm on there make it a like a necklace something fancy maybe what do we like yep this is the one i'm gonna go with we shall attach and here we have it and now what i'm going to do with it is pop it into a journal let's see how this will look give the journal a little bit of a necklace perhaps it doesn't go so well with this journal cover let's try something with a bit more contrast that looks really really beautiful like an extra little touch on a journal cover i mean it doesn't you know it doesn't really go together but anyway it's a little thing it's a little extra thing i mean i don't know how practical it is because you kind of have to move this out of the way to open the journal but uh just this on its own i love how it looks and now I'm just thinking that this actually looks quite nice in a journal if you just attach a little necklace just like that on a journal without the you know the notepad it's really quite cool and then look how beautiful it looks on this one and this one and this one and now i feel like putting a charm on this one anyway take it or leave it it's just an idea that you can you know change around and, and suit it to your own taste and i think just this just seeing this really inspired me i love i love what she did here it's so simple such a simple little thing to do and then she's punched holes in the sides here so that could also be utilized in a way you could make perhaps i don't know a really simple bound journal using holes like this and then instead of having the handle touched here it can be like a long necklace kind of on the side anyway it can go so many different ways i had fun with this today i hope you feel inspired i would love receiving something like this in my journal this could be also a cute little christmas present too i mean it doesn't have to be this type of paper you can use white blank paper and make something real quick uh, you can do if somebody gives you their old jewelry you can repurpose their jewelry and then gift gift a little tearaway notepad to them i don't know plenty of ideas so let me know what you think do you feel inspired and will you be making some or did you already make some thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye